Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP1 Career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. My voice is still a little bit iffy, but getting better. And I have decided that maybe we should build a second probe for Venus. We'll have enough time. The Venus window is in 324 days, and this will be done well ahead of time, and then this pad will have nothing to do. So let's build something, another one of those at the same launch complex. Okay, now there are two of them. But other than that, we just basically have a lot of waiting to do. We are waiting for our new pad. Um, we're waiting for the tracking station upgrade. We are waiting for research. And so let's just get that built. Oh, now we have 50, uh, 45 science. We should take a look at what we can do with that. More avionics. <laughs> no, we should focus on the crew capsules now. Yep, we can finally do basic capsules, so let's unlock that. Okay, getting close to the Venus launch window now. I think we'll just proceed with it. Let's see, research. We need more researchers, it looks like. We have a thousand total engineers. Oh, it looks like we can only have 300 researchers, so... I guess we should upgrade the R&D building to get more researchers. Research limit will be 600. I need my uh, MMH in Mon 3, so we're going to get to that. This will require that and advanced capsules era material science. Okay. Okay, we're just two days away from the Venus window. Let us... wait, we should have actually started rolling out earlier, but... Okay, okay. Travel time is about 116 days, which is a lot for the solar panels, we'll see. I'll just line up with the moon per usual. Lies roughly in the same plane as everything else, not exactly. We'll at least get interplanetary science, science from around the sun for once. Okay, essay is on, throttle up, and we'll see, ignition. One engine's out. Um, we'll roll it back, we'll roll it back. Alright, fine. Can we roll one out while the other one's rolling back? I guess so. Okay, so they, they can be on two separate tracks, I guess. That's efficient. Okay, let's try this one. Okay, trying for a nighttime launch this time, but it is a lightly colored rocket so that we can see it, so it's alright. So, throttle up, SAS is on, ignition, and launch to Venus. Hopefully. Okay, separation. And it has ignited. Bearings. Okay, staging. Oh, it occurs to me I should have gone straight out. I was expecting a five degree inclination anyway. <laughs> I shouldn't have lined up with the moon at all. The plot was for five degree inclination. I mean, the transfer window planner thing. Alright, we'll just let the RCS do it. Oh, we are already going down, though. Not ideal. But we'll take this for now. We managed some stuff. So, um, thrall down, separation. Get the solar panels out. We have a plot, and we can get there. But, we're not in orbit. Um, looks like our periapsis will be 131 kilometers. That's not too bad. I think we can just proceed like this. Hopefully it won't be too much drag. 0% wear for now. Uh, not a great place for comms in the middle of the Sahara Desert. Maybe, 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 maybe not. 
Got this station. Okay, that might be good enough. We'll be burning out this stage. Just a matter of whether we can go on to the next stage or not. Okay, go. We have no calm. Maybe Israel will help next. That NFG could potentially work, but I think their solar panels are degraded by now. Okay. RCS continuing. Well, we have to let it continue. Back in space. Well, we have comms though. Let's see. I'll make a correction burn out here. Or actually, escape burn. It seems like we've got something. It's probably got to take longer than that, though. And we'll need multiple burns. Well, let's try it. Okay, separation. And go ahead. It's going to take the better part of four minutes, so... I don't think that Israel station is going to hold out. It looks like the Iranian station is going to pick us up though, so maybe it'll be alright. Rare collaboration there. Okay, we should shut down temporarily. And reignite. Lots of data units now, but limited to 5,000 it looks like. We are on escape with intents to maintain communication. Oh, I should probably stop them now. Whoops. Went way over. Okay, that's close enough. Let's replot there. Or maybe even RCS it. Okay, well, yeah, let's plot a correction. We'll do that much. And then the rest should be a mid-course adjustment, mid-course correction. After 53 days, we'll check in on it. And if we can, if everything looks good, we'll get close to Venus. That's a nice look. Very good. Oh, but I missed the node. <laughs> Let's just adjust the mid-course correction. Okay. 108 meters per second now, but it's doable. So we do have a Venus probe on its way to Venus. It has a Venus SOI entry, and we need to do a mid-course correction to get closer. Let me edit our other rocket. We'll launch another one just in case. And we'll probably get more science out of it anyway. Maybe we'll change up the science a little bit. And while it's rolling out again, we'll see this get its first interplanetary science. Okay, we actually have to wait for reconditioning before rolling that out. Let's uh, take a look at our probe already launched and see it exit the Earth system and get its first interplanetary science. It's all about comms now, and the solar panels, which, speaking of which, we should probably adjust our orientation here, huh? The second launch will have slightly different instruments. We won't have the temperature scan or barometer on it. We'll instead have the two of the long duration ones. Not the orbital perturbation, since we won't that be at that inclination. Okay, let me just give it a little bit of a rotation. Nothing too complicated. Two days, 12 hours. We're now in interplanetary space, I think. Signal is still, still 100%. And everything's running. 
solar panels 1% after two days. So the transit time right now, periapsis is in 93 days only. So assuming the wear is linear, <laughs> um, uh, we should be all right because we'll be closer to the sun, which will compensate for the wear. Okay, we're getting our first inter interplanetary science. Uh, stuff is ticking in from all sorts of probes at a pretty fast rate, too. Look at that. I mean, well, of course, mainly it's the first temperature and pressure scans being run in interplanetary space that is ticking it up so fast. Okay, you're rolling out. We're a little bit late on the window though now. 73 science. So, early docking procedures. Let's get some more orbital rocketry, I feel bad. We need to get to this engine here. So, let's throw that on. Okay, this time it'll just go straight out instead of lighting up with the moon or anything. SAS on, throttle up. Ignition. We've got four this time. And launch. Oh, we lost an engine. That's probably okay. Separation ignition. Bearing. Okay, continuing. We should certainly make orbit. Okay, shut down. So yes, successful orbit. And we might use this stage to orient it for its next burn, the burn out. This one has a descending node there. So a different place that it's going to be beaming up with. Venus. I'll take less delta V, but more wear. 112 days. We get a very direct approach. That's actually a pretty high inclination. Still probably not great for the orbital perturbation experiment. Okay, that'll do for now. Should be connected to Amalek for the burn, hopefully. We're being held by a Monia sat right now. That's pretty good. I think that'll help for the whole time. Okay, separation. Ah, oh, yes, we've got Amalek. And ignition. Okay, um, let's stop that for a sec. Staging. And go. Let's start the science stuff. So we've got cosmic ray science, micrometeorite, invisible imaging. None of it will work here. But around Venus, hopefully. Visible imaging, I just didn't want to take off the TV camera on principle. We already have one on the other one. Okay, shut down. Restart. Maybe this time we'll get to that 10,000 data units. Not that they were, you know, bad before, as far as reliability. The chance of success is 99.67. Oh, limits on at 7,000 data units. Oh well. wonder why. Basically the first limit was 1,000 and then 5,000. This time we only got to 7,000. Hmm. Okay, go again. Okay, stop. Let's see what's going on. Well, we'll just use the mid-course adjustment. That's closer than the other one was after this burn. So... Let's see, let's do the two make course adjustments close to each other for convenience. Not that low. Okay, 
just 17.3. We'll add that alarm. And let's start spinning. This is a fine orientation. Let's also make sure that we get warnings about power on these two. Okay, so that's all set up. This is spinning. Let's go back to Space Center. ELA-5 is almost done. I suppose in retrospect I should have taken early inner planet probes, but uh, well, you know, we'll be able to do that when we need to do that. That's the whole program slot limitation. If uh, we had one more slot, I would pick that up. I don't know. Um, is there an administration building upgrade? Oh, okay. All right, we'll do that. We'll do an administration building upgrade and then we can get extra slots and then we'll be able to pick that up as well. Too late, but you know, uh, it also requires Mars orbit and Venus orbit, so that's a little bit more long term anyway. We're not building anything on the other pads and ELA-5 is done. I'm going to get all our engineers there and start building our geostationary satellite, our new type. So we don't have the max. Uh, we've got some hanging out somewhere else, I suppose. Hanger. Okay, 1019 all at ELA-5. Um, what's wrong here? Oh, propellant GSE. I thought we had configured a propellant GSE for this. Apparently not. Hey, okay, well, just 255 apparently. Renovate. Building. Now we have to move the engineers back. That'll take until November. Uh, the R&D upgrade will be ready. Oh, we have to do the burns for our little probes. Let's see how they're doing. Still mostly facing the sun and spinning. We're 21%. Comms 70, 80%, something there. Okay, burning. Oh, a little bit too close. Um, I don't mind that. We'll see how we need it to approach Venus based on comms. We don't want Venus to block our comms. But that looks fine. Uh, but probably when we turn to the sun, things are going to change. So once we get into Venus SOI, we'll fix that. And we'll add the SOI change alarm. Next one. Well, somehow this one is facing the opposite direction as the sun, so that's not good. But it's still okay. I don't know, whatever. Maybe I should just let SAS hold it. I guess the persistent rotation thing is being handled by Realism Overhaul itself these days because it was an uh, persistent rotation was installed separately. So I don't know how its sun orientation method is actually implemented compared to persistent rotation, which had a little dialogue that you could select it from. So that I don't know. Stop and relevant for the moon missions because it does it so quick. I think we'll just RCS this. Okay, uh, just stop. Always crashing. Well, let's go the other way around then. Well, again, turning to the sun is going to throw everything off anyway, but... I could just have SAS hold this and see if that works. Or... Could have smart ASS hold sundown and see if that works. All sorts of possibilities. Anyway, we'll add the SOI change. Alright, this one's all set. How's it doing on the science? Still running cosmic ray science and mic micrometeorite detection. Well, by the time it gets to Venus, it should have those done. Okay, we completed the R&D building upgrade, and since we have so many sciences queued up now, we should probably hire more researchers. 
Oh heck, I'll just hire the limit. Okay, we've maxed it out. We've got the 600 researchers. We've got interplanetary era science, so we should probably lo launch those scientific instruments. And that will include the new TV camera. Got the DenMG. We're gonna roll it out. But I'm actually not gonna launch it. We're going to follow our Venus mission arriving at Venus. And we will get that look at Venus for the first time, hopefully. So we'll launch the geostationary satellite in the next episode. Yeah, it always likes to be oriented differently, doesn't it? Oh well. That's fine. It's still charged, that's the important thing. Comes 40% right now. But Earth and Venus are relatively close for the time being. In fact, almost as close as possible. Seem it finished everything out here? Yeah. We have entered Venus SOI. First time entering the SOI of another planet. Can't really see it right now, but somewhere there. Oh, uh, maybe there. That's close enough. Periapsis 646. I'll take that for this time. I don't know what low over Venus is, but hopefully that'll be it. Now, comms. Um, we'll lose comms past Periapsis temporarily. We're not planning any maneuvers, so... Should be okay. So we'll leave it spinning, collecting sunlight. So panel degradation, 23% only, really. So, excellent. At this stage. Yep, there it is. Whoa, camera. Well, that's an interesting Terminator. And we're going up again. Oodles of science indeed. We have 180 now. 181. Well, we may need even more researchers, huh? Okay, we didn't get all the mass spectrometry, but we got some of it. We got all of the high over Venus, but not the low over Venus. Everything else I think we got. So... Yes, I, it doesn't have anything else stored. We got 181 science. Flyby of Venus success. So, with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.